Have you ever been frustrated by the behavior of financial markets, where the movements seem random or go against what you would expect? Or perhaps you've looked at the S&P 500 and wondered, how can it keep rising when it seems so overpriced? It's important to understand that these market movements may seem random, but they actually have structure to them. Surprisingly, these structures aren't based on the specifics of individual buy or sell decisions. This might sound counterintuitive, but it's a core idea from one of my favorite, often overlooked theories, complexity theory. I've been studying and applying it for 20 years, and it's key to understanding market price fluctuations. This deeper understanding is something that I definitely wish I had when I started investing. What I got wrong. When I first started buying stocks, like most people, I assumed that markets followed the news. Earnings reports, employment data, inflation reports, because this is what you hear in the media. But what's not often discussed is how prices are also influenced by less tangible factors, like market sentiment, investor psychology, and even automated trading algorithms reacting to technical signals. So why is complexity theory important? It provides a framework to understand how these factors influence the market. It looks not only at predictability, but also at how outcomes evolve and self-organize through feedback loops and adaptive behaviors. Complexity theory emphasizes how interactions amongst numerous traders, which we can consider to be agents, lead to emergent behaviors and patterns. What I find particularly useful about this theory is that it ties together aspects of chaos theory, which deals with unpredictability and fractals, which explain the structures we see in price movements. The theory. The reality is that there are so many variables and market participants that it's impossible to model the situation with precision. Financial advisors often describe markets as unpredictable, and that's true. There are too many variables to forecast outcomes accurately, so these complex systems are best modeled as random processes. One simple model to simulate market movements is a random walk, where we toss a coin to decide if the market will go up or down. Despite its simplicity, this model surprisingly mimics real data. It displays fractal geometry, meaning that as you zoom in on the data, you see similar patterns as you zoom in more and more. This is why big price movements happen over longer timescales than smaller ones. If this wasn't true, then the patterns wouldn't be self-similar in this way. Now imagine an index or stock that's overpriced. To return to its true value, it can't just follow a smooth path. It must meander before reaching that point in a manner which obeys the scaling. More rarely, a very sharp movement up or down associated with a large price correction also needs to obey scaling laws, which would likely result in a series of abrupt up and down movements. It can't just snap to this value in a single jump. This is volatility clustering. This is a key reason why markets or stocks can stay overpriced or underpriced for extended periods, but occasionally ping wildly up and down, reflecting a series of overcorrections. While speculation greed or fear might be at play and would generally be cited to explain this sort of behavior. What's more interesting is that it is the mathematics of complexity theory which predicts that such behavior should occur. Self-organization. While we can use random walk models to simulate some aspects of price action, they're an incomplete description. What's missing is the concept of self-organization, where patterns emerge in a system without central control. Instead, each individual reacts to others, and from these interactions, larger patterns form. Think of a busy city street during rush hour. There's no central coordination of every pedestrian, cyclist, or car, yet mostly they avoid collisions. The same self-organizing behavior happens in nature too, like in flocks of birds or in schools of fish. What's interesting is that self-organizing systems tend to create what is called a power law distribution. On a log-log plot, these laws look like a straight line. Power laws describe how things like wealth or city sizes follow a pattern where a few entities dominate the majority. For example, the 80-20 rule suggests that 80% of wealth is owned by 20% of the population. In financial market networks, the same principle applies. A few nodes or major traders have most of the connections, 
And these traders play the most critical roles in influencing price movements. A significant move by a major trader can cause ripples across the market, triggering cascades of buying or selling. Conversely, a lone trader with few connections is much less likely to have a large impact if they decide to sell off their stocks. This dynamic creates a market that's robust to panic by small investors, but fragile if key networks of traders become affected. A famous example of this is the dot-com bubble of the late 1990s. Tech stocks surged, driven not by company fundamentals, but by speculation and hype by key market players. Prices continued to climb despite overvaluation. Eventually, once doubts about valuations took hold, the same players pulled the plug, leading to a massive sell-off. What this means. Complexity theory helps explain how markets actually function, not just how we think they do. What this theory helped me understand is that you need a decent strategy to plan your trading or investments. I'm no financial advisor and I'm not trying to give you any specific advice here. But some really annoying behavior I've found particularly helpful to understand is 1. News and valuations aren't always as important as you think. Price movements tend to be unpredictable and often make counterintuitive movements in response to announcements. 2. Stock price movements are self-similar, which means by nature they meander and can stay above and below valuations for extended times. 3. Price volatility obeys a power law so that most of the movement is caused by a few events, while the rest of the time, movements tend to be small. Thanks for watching and see you next time.